Alrighty, hello. So you want to add MMD motions to Roblox, and uh, it's pretty simple. Just let you know that there are some issues that can occur, so, uh, and I'll come into that later, but uh, just letting you know. So, it's very simple though. And everything you're gonna need is, oh, that was a test, so there we go. Uh, everything you're gonna need is right here. Uh, you're gonna need a model, you're gonna need a motion, of course, and then you're going to need this, which will also come from this website right here. This is where I learned a lot to convert it into FBX. So I'll link everything down here. And also, if you want a motion, of course, you can just look them up on YouTube as well. So if you want any of them, you know, you can probably do that, I guess. Anything you want. So what you want to do is take everything out of here and make it into its own folder. I've already done that, so it's all right here already. And then you want to get this XML file, which you'll get from this link. I'll put it in the description. And you want to get this. This will translate all the bones from Japanese and English. Once you do that, just drag and drop. And you want to put it in there and replace. So now, once you've gotten all that done, you want to get your model. Oops, there we go. And I just simply get the PMX file. I don't really get the textures or anything. I just put them straight into there. The only reason I don't do the textures is because it seems to not matter anyways. It always comes out without textures. You're gonna have to apply the textures in Roblox Studio. There might be a way, but I'm unsure. So if that's something you wanna mess with, or maybe it just works for you, that's great. But now that we've done that, we wanna also get our motion file and add it in there as well. Now that we're in here, we're going to grab both our model and our motion. Let me get control and drag it onto that exe and just let it do its thing. Depending on the size of the motion, this can take a minute or two or it could take a couple seconds. So we just got to let it do its thing. Alright, so now after it's done, you'll be left with the FBX file and uh, some extra stuff, but I'm not sure what that does. Now, if you try to put this straight into Blender by itself, it will give you an error. So, before you do that, you're going to want to use this FBX converter, which I'll also put in the description. And you are going to want to add the file. Now, it's right here already. I'm just going to add... Let it do its thing, and then it'll make its own folder inside of there, so that all looks good, I guess, and convert. Alright, so now that it's converted, we, oh wait, I'll actually show you this as well. You'll have it in its own file, or in its own folder, and this is the new file. I wonder if you can drag, oh, you can. Or maybe you can. <laughs> Okay, I guess you can. I learned something in then, but no, I didn't. And I'm just going to import it. I made a folder for the tutorial down here. I might skip this part anyways, because I don't want people to see my folders. Uh, now we'll go through here. X, B, F, B, X, and boom. Alright, so now that it's imported, oops, I was getting used to Roblox controls, you now have the uh, motion everything in here. So if you press play, you can watch it go. And you'll start grooving and doing its thing. So you can either start, oh yeah, you're going to also make it the uh, full size of the animation. Now to make Roblox not die during this tutorial, I'm only going to make it to 500 frames. And 
that. So, yeah. Now we're gonna export it. We're gonna put it in a place we will remember. And we'll just call it SV Grooving, because he's grooving. Also, if you want to, you can scale it down since Roblox uses most things in like, I think that they only use like centimeters or something like that. They keep things very small. I'm just gonna keep it the way it is though. And uh, I'll show you a way you can scale it down in Roblox. So once it is done exporting, we're going to go ahead and minimize that. Here is the finished file. No, wait, no, that is not it. It is uh, in exported where we exported it. Now we're going to simply go into Roblox Studio. This is my little test place where I test stuff. Easy as that. And we're going to Avatar Importer. I usually just stick with Custom. And we're going to put in our file we just exported from Blender. And here it is. So yes, it is giant, but uh, I'll show you a way to fix that here in a minute. But first, uh, as you can tell, textures aren't there, but there is something you can do about that in Roblox Studio. If you want, you can do a surface appearance, which this is in the beta phase, so it might not show up in your game. So it might be better to fix it in Blender first. I'm not I'm still kinda new with Blender, so I couldn't give you a direct tutorial for that. But I'm sure there's many resources online to be able to learn how to do that. But uh, now that we got in this, and if you at least want to see what it looks like in Roblox, just upload your texture of the body and there you go or whatever uh, way you do the textures for your model. For me, since it's already here, uh, yeah. Did she and me close this? Oh no, not that. that. That's a lot of bones. Let me close all of that. <laughs> all right, so now that we've gotten that, we're gonna go to Animation Editor. We're gonna click on our model, it doesn't really matter about this, so we just close that. And we're gonna do import from FBX animation and click the same file that you imported in for the uh, model. Since the uh, file has the animation data inside of it as well. And while this loads, I wanted to discuss something with you guys. Do you say data or data? I'm just kinda curious. All right, hello again. Uh, it has been uh, a, a decent amount of time has passed now, but uh, I was have having some technical difficulties. Now I've actually gotten things working. I went ahead and changed a level as well. But uh, now that we know, and I've even changed the motion. So the motion that I put in the original clip was catch the wave. I now changed it to, I don't actually know the name. It's from Persona. But uh, you'll see here in a second. But uh, it works, so you know I can click play, and uh, you know, look at that. There. It does the thing. I may not sound as excited anymore, but I've been—it's been, it's been uh, two hours of on and off working on why it was lagging and uh, causing my computer to freeze up for a second, or just Roblox and then having to shut Roblox down. So I decided just to move it to a new place, put in a new animation, and trim a good bit of the animation down to fit under 30 seconds. So, yeah. So there's, this is still very early. There's still going to be a lot of issues. And, you know, that should be expected as it is a beta feature. Actually, no, I think it just actually came out of beta. But still, just don't be surprised if some issues arise. And if you have any issues, put a comment down below and I'll try my best to help. I just discovered how to do this myself, so I'm very well new to this, as well as you are. So, I'll try my best. 
hopefully this helped you. Maybe you can make some very fun creations with this. I'm excited to see. Just this whole uh, mesh deformation stuff is really cool to me, and I'm excited to see what people are doing. There's actually a video where someone made like a whole ocean, and there's like really realistic, at least in terms of Roblox, realistic waves, and it is amazing. And so I'm excited to see what people actually do with this. Good luck out there, and uh, have fun. And you know, do do your dances. Maybe you have fun notes. Good luck. All right, I just had to come back because I just remembered there's one more thing I have to show. So, uh, I never told you how to scale down the animation. So let me just show you that real quick. So if you want to, you can just, uh, okay, well, we might need to close this first. And it's going to take a minute to load because it's a big model and a bunch of animation stuff. All right, so now as you can see, we got the model. So let's just scale them down. Boop. Actually, you know, let's do one thing. So, let's make it big again. And now I have this animation resizer. So we can do this, set, original. And now we are going to now make it small. Ooh. Maybe just a little bit smaller. And then set, new. Oh, I never saved the animation guy. That's fine, because even though we, now since we have these numbers, we can still, Save them for when we need them. So we just go back into animation editor. And as you can see, since it was uh, stretched, or you know, since it was scaled, it is now stretched. So to fix that, just want to save it. Which will make a little saving point somewhere. We gotta let it do its thing. There we go. Now that it's saved, we click it. And then apply scale. Now that we've applied the scale, just want to click, click back down here. For it to load, alright. Load, and the one that's been scaled. And there we go. Uh, scaling down does cause some issues, but it's they're not very noticeable. Uh, the one thing I notice is like usually if you have like movement that goes up and down a lot, like you're bobbing up and down, uh, like you're floating, I guess, and you know you're like you know going up and down very slowly. Uh, anyways, that may not translate very well when you scale it down a lot. Well, at least that's what happened whenever I used one of my... I made like a test idle animation and it didn't like that, so... Yeah. Just letting you know. But, uh... Yeah, I hope that helped you out. Now you know how to scale that on your animations. Just get this, and I'll put it in the description as well, so... Yeah. Good luck again. Oh, and also, uh, it's Halloween today, so happy Halloween. Hope you uh, all have a spooky night. Good night.